I'm William Shatner, and this is Heartbeat of America. Our show focuses on corporate America, its stories, its drama, its breakthroughs. We'll be going out today to report on an organization that is impacting our lives and shaping our future, an organization that truly is the heartbeat of America. In the 20th century, a group of future Americans led by William Shatner ventured out into the universe. The challenge? To take the American spirit and courage to the final frontier of man, outer space. It was an exciting time on television, but it was only a fantasy. Meanwhile, here on the planet Earth in the 21st century, a new challenge has emerged. And this one's for real. It's the challenge to unite America and to keep our economy and our country moving forward. This has inspired Heartbeat of America to launch a special series entitled Keeping America Strong. In the 20th century, William Shatner took us off on a voyage into the universe to experience what life is like on other planets. But now, here in the 21st century, he's come back to explore what life is like right here on our own planet. This is all part of a series that we call Keeping America Strong. And as you know, part of keeping America strong lies in helping Americans to live healthy, quality lives. And one of the ways to do that is to provide the proper care for what has been described as the new epidemic. And I'm talking about diabetes. Maybe you don't know it, but 20 million people here in the U.S. have diabetes right now, and more than 25 million additional people are at risk of getting it. It is the leading cause of kidney failure, of blindness in adults, of limb amputation, and it is a major risk factor for heart disease, strokes, and birth defects. It is really a huge problem. The big question, of course, is what can be done about it. Our guest today has developed diabetes care centers that are dedicated to providing all the services needed for individuals with or at risk of getting diabetes. And we're about to find out just how they perform this most critical service. I think you're going to find this very interesting and very informative. Our guest is Dr. Kim Angelitis. He is the CEO and chairman of the Diabetes Centers of America, which are headquartered in Houston. Doctor, nice to have you with us. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Let's point out something about, <clears throat> we're talking about this problem of diabetes and how serious it is today. You know the facts. How serious is it? Well, it's, a, it's a extremely serious. In fact, uh, the World Health Organization has, has actually declared uh, diabetes as the new epidemic. In fact, in the United States, as you correctly said, there is over 21 million people who actually have diabetes, and there's probably uh, on the order of another 25 million people who are at risk. But there are populations uh, of, our, uh, of our Americans who uh, are particularly susceptible of getting diabetes. For example, uh, American Hispanics have about 25%. It runs about 25% in the American Hispanic population. And similarly, in, in African Americans, it's about 20%. So one in every four Hispanic individuals has diabetes, or certainly uh, one in every three is at risk of getting diabetes. So it's a, it's a huge problem. Is that because it's genetic from their point? I mean, I've always heard that diabetes was to a degree hereditary. If you had a, you know, a father or an uncle who had it, you would be more prone to develop it. Well, well certainly there's a, there's a hereditary type of uh, influence. There are people who have a uh, history of diabetes in their families right. who are at greater risk. But I think the, the, the major problem that we're facing in the United States right now and in, and in developing countries, and I'll, I'll give you an example, for example, in India, um, the, what we're facing is the, the tr tremendous change in lifestyles where individuals have become very sedentary and uh, the, the, the foods have changed and the very lifestyles. So it, it goes hand in hand in some cases with the increase in obesity such that people now uh, and, and this population is getting uh, more at risk as well as developing diabetes. So it's a change in lifestyle and that's one of the things that, that we're certainly more, mostly focused on is that diabetes is in, in, in part a hereditary or a well, as well as a susceptibility, if you will. But there are changes in the lifestyle that people can make for the good to, to abate the, the, uh, the causes of diabetes as well. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's both hereditary as well as lifestyle. I mean, uh, I should have asked you this before. Is there any one specific thing that you can point your finger to that causes diabetes? Well, uh, I mean, diabetes. Do we know? Yeah, I mean, well, for example, I mentioned one, which is obesity. The increasing obesity really is one of the major factors for for people getting diabetes. And so, those individuals who 
who are overweight yeah. um, and are on the obesity pathway are those individuals who are, are more probable uh, of getting diabetes. And so the underlying cause essentially is sort of a malfunction of the pancreas to be able to secrete insulin to be able to, to use the glucose that you, you absorb through your eating in the foodstuffs. And so uh, obesity is one cause. Um, there is lack of exercise, for example. Okay. Not necessarily obesity, which is which is an, another cause. So there are multiple causes, no one thing. Specific. Not one thing. And That's how correct. does one know if they're, they've got diabetes? What happens? Well, I think that the symptoms are fairly well characterized. For example, the the, the general symptoms are uh, for individuals who, who who might think that they have diabetes. It's a frequent urination, uh, excessive thirst. Um, the most severe case is when people feel a little dizzy and and they don't feel uh, quite right. Um, and that's when they because they have low blood sugars or hypoglycemia. There is the sort of the flip side of that is when people have very high blood sugars when their insulin isn't working, such that uh, uh, they also are at risk for uh, for major episodes of stroke. So, on on the low side, people check into the emergency room uh, because of low blood sugars, and on the other side of high uh, high blood sugars, they check into the emergency room because they're uh, they're in trouble. So there there are signs that people do get. And one other question on the subject of diabetes, then we'll get to your clinics, is what happens if it's not treated? Well, I, mean, I, think, I think in its most serious form, uh, as, as you indicated in the very beginning, that uh, diabetes really, the, the complications of diabetes are really very severe. Uh, the very, one of the very first things that goes, essentially, is, is the vision. It just so happens that the, the vascular turn in the eye is very susceptible, so people really start to lose their, their vision. The second thing is because the vessels in the legs are, are so small and uh, uh, they're susceptible to uncontrolled diabetes, um, people have trouble with the, the circulation. That leads to amputation. So those are the two most. And then the very worst, in effect, and sort of the end of the line is when they have kidney failure and they end up essentially on, on dialysis, which is a major life-changing uh, life event. It can be fatal. And it can be fatal, of course. So. Very serious. All right, what are the Diabetic Centers of America? What, what is this organization all about? Well, we, we actually looked at how diabetes was, was essentially treated in the United States with this increasing epidemic. And, and largely what was happening and what is happening is that uh, uh, diabetics essentially will get into a state where they don't have the sort of the continuous medical care that they really require. And it's sort of a it's sort of a uh, an, an expose on what medical care is anyway, in the sense that uh, medical care is fragmented and uncoordinated. But a diabetic essentially needs to have many services. They need to have heart services. They need to have foot services. They need to have eye services. They need to have medical services, and they need to have nutritional services. So what happens is generally is that a diabetic doesn't get those services and they wind up in an acute service which is a hospital and the hospital really isn't very well equipped to handle a uh, condition disease or condition that is really a lifestyle type of condition that needs to be managed at home so a diabetic will get <coughs> into trouble they'll end up in the emergency room and essentially, they won't have really the tools when they're, when they're released to be able to manage their, their disease properly. We looked at that and we said, you know, there has to be a better way. There has to be a better way where we need to make it easily accessible so that the individuals who have diabetes can have access to coordinated care. They can have access to integrated care. And they can have all the services under one roof and that they don't get in trouble by checking into the emergency room and just getting the sort of finger in the dike type of thing and they actually have the tools by which they can manage it on a continuous basis so that was really our primary objective is to be able to put everything under one roof to make it easily accessible and to be able to manage the individual through the whole continuum of their care so the clinics are open they're indeed open how many are there at the moment well right now we have uh, uh, fully functioned uh, 12, uh, 12 clinics and we have another uh, 10 clinics which are uh, in, the, in the development stage. Now you're in the building. You're in Houston, so I would assume you've got clinics in Houston, but 
are there in other city states right now? Yes, we've uh, we've yeah, actually we take them all off. But we, I mean, we've yeah. we've uh, we we actually have all of the metro Houston area. We have several centers in Texas, and we're coming out into the West Coast at the moment to be able to establish centers in in, in the West Coast. Let me ask you mm -hmm. about one of the big things that you're talking about, and how you're approaching giant corporate.